If you don't recognize him, that's Joel Webin. <laughs> Uh, looking very different, uh, talking very different than how he does in his actual like YouTube show. I won't call it a ministry, um, but he was on Ruslan's channel. Now, uh, Ruslan watches every once in a while. We've had positive interactions in the past. I got to admit, um, I am kind of shocked that he would have Joel Webin on his show. One, as far as influence, like this isn't a big get. I'll say that Um, like it's it's helping Joel Webin out quite a bit. And I would say that what Ruslan actually put out, he platformed Joel Webin like Ruslan has between his couple channels. He's got like three hundred and fifty something like that. Three hundred fifty thousand uh, subscribers. And if you don't know who Ruslan is, uh, he's a Christian commentator, he does a similar thing to what I do, but is way more focused on like secular culture. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say some things and, uh, Ruslan, if you watch this, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of disappointed <laughs> like that. I've been disappointed for a while. I unsubscribed from his channel and I do want to say that here on my channel because not to throw like shade and be like dramatic, but I've, I've talked about him really positively in the past, or at least I think I've done that. And so I feel a responsibility to say I've unsubscribed from his channel, mostly because of his thumbnails. I couldn't, I couldn't watch anything on his, uh, on his channel because it was just like, everything was graphic and over-sexualized and it was, it was really intense. And like, I would have my kids come in because I watch, when I watch YouTube, I'm usually watching on my Apple TV in the living room. And there was just like tons of stuff. And I was like, you know, flipping through stuff. It's not going to cause me to stumble, but I got little kids, you know, who are running through. So I unsubscribed. And then there was also like, he wants to have these conversations about theology. And that's cool. And like every Christian has a right to, you know, get on a platform and say whatever they want. Right. Like I, I don't have to ask anyone's permission to turn on this camera hit this microphone up and be able to, you know, have my own YouTube show. But at the same time, if you get, if you get really popular, I think you have a responsibility to, uh, inform your audience, not just to entertain them. And, uh, that channel I think is more about entertainment. And, um, I don't like to say that because again, I, I think he's an interesting guy and I've, like I've really enjoyed watching his stuff in the past, but he's just kind of transitioned that way. And he's starting to have these conversations with theologians and pastors. And some of it is like the demon slayer stuff, which obviously I'm not going to be up for. And it's really disappointed that he would continue to be like, these guys are great. Uh, you know, having Isaiah Saldivar, I think is his name onto his show and things like that. Not cool. Not cool to me, you know, but again, I'm one of those hardcore Calvinist guys that's going to be like, Oh, you know, we need to actually care about the old, you know, I, I, that was too mean, <laughs> but like, I, I get it. Like people go like, Oh, the Calvinists, they're always so hardcore and they'll split from anybody if they're just a little bit imprecise. I think people who know me on the channel know I'm not quite like that, but at the same time, like if you're going to have some of these guys on there, you need to push back against some of the stuff that you don't want their, 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 um, their teachings influencing your audience. I think you have a responsibility to do that. You know, here on this channel, I don't really do interviews. Like I had Joe Thorne on cause it's Joe. Uh, and then, uh, I had my buddy Wyatt Graham from TGC Canada, uh, come on and we talked about Canada. Um, but I don't really do a lot of interviews. I, maybe I would like to in the future, but I, I do that because I feel responsibility for what I'm doing here to be able to give you my th feedback, like my thoughts. And, um, you know, if there's someone else, like, I don't want to have to vouch for them. Honestly, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to have my credibility on the line because of whoever I'm sitting next to, uh, or interviewing and something that they said or did maybe in the past, maybe in that interview and all of that. That's just me. That's just me. That's where I'm at. So some of you guys ask me, why don't you have this person on the show? Why don't you have this person? I just, that's where I'm at. Now I've got some friends that would like, I would like to have on the show eventually. Um, but that's in the future. Okay. Um, but 
he had Joel Webin on and it was about post-millennialism. And I get you have you have a topic that you're going to discuss. And so you're sticking to that topic. But that topic isn't in a vacuum. It's not like uh, Joel Webin is only known for post-millennialism. OK, and he didn't deal with any of that stuff. Actually, like before I get into this, let me let me show you this part here, um, because in this interview, it just was post-millennialism, post-millennialism. And there was some wacky stuff throughout. We'll take a look at one of them here in a minute about the prosperity gospel. But he didn't talk about any of the other stuff that Joel Webin is really known for, unless you want to pay him. Watch the extended version of this podcast on Patreon. It gets a little spicy. It gets a little weird. Like, I don't want to get pearly thing. So if you want to see the entire thing, meet me over at Patreon. But here's a little preview. Like, but but my, it's my world is being rocked right now, Zach. But I this, thought I was conservative, right. man. Are most of the women at your church not working? So, like, I, I believe that, you know, that, that women should wear a head covering on the Lord's Day. But it's like... So, so all the women in your church got this on. Does your wife wear this on? Sunday? I said, you know what? I'm not going to apologize for slavery. Whoa. I'm not. So you don't think women should vote? No. Why? Sounds, They're shredding lightly with the vote. It sounds so intense, but I'm telling you, dude, you look back over history, you that, don't have to That's starting it. to sound a lot like Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other super controversial views of yours that I need to know? Oh, so I was with, I was talking oh with a guest. Oh, my heart's it's okay, sinking it's okay. right now. Okay. You're, you're anti-slavery. You don't like racism. I am anti. <sighs> okay. So I, w I will give Ruslan credit for at least having that in there of like, there's a lot of controversial stuff, but to me, it's kind of gross uh, to be like, there's controversial stuff. Don't you want to see it? So, hey, hop onto my Patreon. Like, this is why I don't do a Patreon. Like, honestly, it's like this and like a few other people who just like use it kind of weird to me. If you want to give to the channel, we do a fundraiser and it's just not anything different. You're not getting some secret information, but also like, I, again, I appreciate that he at least put that in there so that people would know if, if they didn't, you know, fast forward through the, the ad, which we all do. Uh, but you know, if they watched it, they would at least know that there's some controversial stuff about Joel Webin. Um, and I know that Ruslan would be like, well, just because, you know, I have people on the show. He actually, I think he got a little mad at me once in a, in a chat. Um, cause I was trying to confirm some things and he was like, uh, I think a little uptight about it. Um, but he was basically, um, saying that he doesn't have to agree with people when they come on his show and that people should just know that cool. But when you have people on your show, like, and you're not disagreeing in the moment, like, uh, you could be like, oh, of course, like I disagree with it later. Well, nobody knows that. Okay. Nobody knows that. They just saw you nodding a whole lot and you have people on your show and you don't deal with the controversial stuff. You put it behind a paywall. Like that is going to like Joel Webin just gained probably a lot of followers. And especially from like the kind of audience that Ruslan has, like you go into that chat, like it's, it's craziness. It's craziness. And he knows it's craziness and everybody knows it's craziness. I'm sure there are great people that watch his stuff. I've watched his stuff. I've been in that chat. So there, there are, but there's, there's a lot of, wow, people out there with crazy ideas. There are going to be people who are just drawn from, from that channel over to Joel Webb and stuff. And they'll just bite into it and just be like, this is great. 